Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. My name is Chris Badgett, and in this episode, we have a special guest, Akshat Chaudhry of Blog Vault and Malcare. And we're going to be talking about security, backups, um, taking proper care, and ensuring your business is you know, really secure. And for the education entrepreneur out there, these are issues that some people overlook and sometimes find out the hard way that they should have had a plan or, um, you know, had better security and backup, things of that nature. But first, Akshat, thank you for coming on the show. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's, it's great to reconnect with you. Um, for the listener out there who hasn't met you yet, um, how did you get into security? Like, why is this an important issue for you? All right. So, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we have two products, BlogVault and Malcare. BlogVault is our WordPress backup service, and Malcare is our security service. Uh, we started with BlogVault about seven years ago, and we realized that one of the big reasons why people restore their sites is when their sites would get hacked. So they would be like, okay, my site's hacked. Uh, help me restore and that will get rid of the hack. Now, there are, many, there are many things wrong with restoring when your site gets hacked because that's not the right answer, but that's a separate discussion. Uh, what, we, what we would realize is, is that sites would get hacked for months before customers would realize that their sites have been hacked. And they would use a plethora of systems and plugins out there, everything that we can think of, and we realize that they just were not doing the job that was needed to inform the customer and help the customer recover and protect the sites. So that's what got us into taking up the problem. And we thought it's going, we knew that it was a tough problem and being a small team, like a lot of uh, us WordPress entrepreneurs, uh, we had very limited resources, but nonetheless, we thought, okay, let's take up this problem. And little did we realize that it's going to take us three years to really figure out how to solve the problem correctly. Because dealing with hackers and uh, finding malware is, is a tough nut to crack, crack. So that's how we got into security, just to help our customers like the customers told us that they were having a problem and it is it is a difficult market to get into so but nonetheless we are here with with security that's fantastic um and just for the listener out there what is the difference between backups and security like how do you see those as different things in your mind okay so if you think about it Backups is a very, very important piece of security, okay? It's like you can think of security in terms of layers and backup is, a, is like the most important piece of it. Why is the most important piece of security? Uh, because when shit hits the fan and everything blows up, you can rely on the backups. Like that's the worst case situation. Does it mean you should recover from a backup and things go bad and you get hacked? That's not necessarily the true answer. But yeah, backups are very related to security. Backups serve other purposes even when it is not dealing with security. Because again, as, uh, as the primary, primary audience here, we are running businesses essentially on WordPress. We are creating a lot of important content and we need that safety. Suppose you have a server crash and uh, suppose so actually, if you would ask me, right, one of the things is you'd be like, okay, how often would you need backups? Maybe once in a blue moon when things really go wrong. And I would be like, I, when we started the service, we thought the same, but that's not really true. We see that people need backups a lot more often than I would have ever guessed. And things do go wrong. We have seen like storms and hurricanes hit and take down data centers. And that was one of our busiest weekends when a lot of folks, I think that was, there was a hurricane a few years back in New York. I don't remember which one. And it took down quite a few data centers. So even hurricanes will take down your site 
and you will require a backup in that case. You'll forget to renew your hosting and you require a backup in that case. And all of these happen. Uh, yeah, your I hosting think... will shut you down one fine day for whatever stupid reason. And yeah, I think we can have a separate talk when it comes to abusing hosting providers, but. Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> those are really good, good points. And um, like, if you have a house, you know, and it burns down or it gets torn apart by a hurricane, you're going to want your house back. You can't really yeah. have a backup of a house. I mean, you can have an insurance policy yeah. and you can get your house for rebuilt, which is kind of like a backup. Hmm. But when it becomes, when it comes to like digital properties, the backup is in some way, it's a lot easier than rebuilding a house, but you have to have that system in place. I agree. Yeah. That's, that's one of the advantages we have. Like, we are selling insurance, but fortunately, we don't have to deal with rebuilding a house. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like it's a backup, but then the, and then the restore, like that's the rebuilding. And luckily in the online space, restoring is not that big of a deal as long as you have the backup. <laughs> um, true. So. To, to a great extent, that's true. Like restoring is a lot easier uh, when you have like a good backup in place. There are some challenges associated with it, but yeah, overall we think re, uh, having backups is key and I would advise it even if I was not running Blog Vault. Yeah, yeah. And, and what's, so like you said, back, backups are a layer and a very important layer in security, but what is, what do you see security as? Like help people understand what what security is all about. Like, what does that mean? Is that strong passwords? Is that like, what is it? Okay, so security, and again, I'll, I'll try and keep it in context of WordPress, mm -hmm. right? And WordPress really does, uh, unfortunately, have a really poor reputation around security. Some of it is unfounded. Those, there, there is some truth to it at some level, right? And uh, so software security, so WordPress security is one aspect of it. Software security also in the recent past has gotten a lot more, a lot more visibility with big thing, big systems blowing up. It all of it's appearing in news big time, right? So people have fortunately have started taking security and uh, giving it more, uh, uh, spending more time and effort looking into it. So when it comes to WordPress security, right? Strong passwords is definitely a very, very important piece of it. Like it's not only for WordPress, but anywhere. Any computer, any system you are using, there are, are malicious people trying to get into that system. So from your phone to your desktop, laptop, to your WordPress site, every each of these systems people are trying to get in because you have precious information in there. You have... Uh, your website can be exploited in many, many ways by hackers. So people are always trying to get in and you need to protect yourself. If you are a regular store owner or site owner, you, you have to understand that security cannot, it, there's no such, such thing as absolute security. You just need to take steps, one step at like, you need to just keep adding layers of security. I think you might, some of you might have heard that term too, right? Like, Security is, uh, in the, you need to add layers of security. And which is why I said that backups is the most important core of security. On top of this, you just keep adding layers to make, add more protection to yourself. Okay. It's like having a house, building a fence, putting a lock, putting a door, if, having a video camera, a surveillance camera, having a dog, Staying awake all night in a paranoid manner, it can, it's just different levels of security you have. And in a similar manner, uh, for, for your website also, you need to add different layers of security. And even then, you might still get dropped. So you'll still have an insurance policy in place, right? Because no, all things said and done, no one can guarantee that you are not going to get dropped. You're only so going you to put in. So if you have an online course or a membership site, these are important considerations. And before we get into more details of backup and security, let's talk about some of the hacks that are out there. Like what, I'm, I wanna know what you're seeing is like the most popular hacks that people have to deal with or malware or whatever. 
And before you go, I just wanted to tell a story several years ago for one of my online course websites. Um, I got hacked by something. It was putting ads with links to pharmaceuticals on um, my site. And it was actually smart in that if I was logged in as a WordPress administrator, I couldn't, I would never see it. So it actually existed for a long time before I became aware of it. And not only could I not, would it not show itself if I, if the WordPress admin was logged in, it also would not show um, on desktop or laptops. It only showed itself on mobile phones. So it was like, it was a very sneaky hack. And then I, I, I was able to get it cleaned up. But that was a hack that I had to deal with um, and that was several years ago. What, what are some, what are the popular hacks or malware that you see happening here in 2017, 2018? So what you went through the pharma hack, that's, that's still quite prominent. We do still, we do still see a, a quite a bit of that. And hackers are very sneaky and they're getting sneakier by the day. So you will see hacks being disguised as fully functioning plugins. And you would be like, okay, that looks fine. The file names look like plugin file names. And you might, you might even think that you might have installed the plugin yourself in your, it might be one of your 10 regular plugins. And it, uh, they do stuff like that. They will modify. Uh, so one of the core things when it comes to hacks we have seen is the first thing the hacker tries and does is installs a backdoor. This is something which we have seen consistently across all the hacks that we see. And these backdoors come in different shapes and forms. They can come in form of a plugin, like a fully functioning plugin to something which is more obvious where they modify a core WordPress file, which is now much, much easier to spot. So it, it can go from one extreme to the other. Uh, there are, recently we saw another customer getting hacked uh, and uh, had a uh, their site got in fully encrypted by the hackers and they had to they had to uh, pay a ransom and again you think that okay this cannot happen to me but it's perfectly normal regular person running a decently popular blog and it got hacked and and he uh, he had to recover fortunately he had a backup and he could recover from it but it was a ransomware ad a hack and the entire site got uh, encrypted. You have hacks where you are talking about uh, uh, serving a lot of dirty malware, like uh, just uh, sh showing uh, pop-ups to to visitors on uh, on on phones where they're just advertising that your site, phone might be uh, compromised. And there are enough visitors who fall for stuff like that, especially if it comes from a trusted website. So we are seeing a lot of those things happening. The newest one that is uh, uh, that is getting a lot of no uh, uh, noise recently is your uh, Bitcoin or uh, what do you call it? cryptocurrency mining hacks. I yeah. think they, I, I, we do see a few of it, but I think it sounds a lot more newsworthy today. So You'll de you'll hear a lot more about it than uh, than you'll see it in practice. A lot of lot of malware we see is in the form of backdoors, where people use your site to attack other sites and to send out spam emails. Those are the two most prominent ones that we see. While these other ones sound uh, they make news, these these two are actually quite common, and they are the ones who will really cause your site to get suspended by your web host. The, Obviously, SEO related, SEO spam related hacks will get you suspended by Google. So those are again quite common, but these are the top three categories I would say. So email spam, attacks to other websites and SEO spam. Can you talk to the online course entrepreneurs out there and the membership site owners? What is the difference between a, like a human doing an, a hack live versus like a bot or some kind of like program that's hacking your site like how much of hacking is an actual person behind another computer somewhere versus some computer program that's cut loose on the internet okay so if you ask me 
almost for majority 99.99 percent of us it's all automated so people are scanning non-stop all the time they are looking on uh, like top 10 million 100 million sites and it doesn't take very much it sounds like a very large number but if you think about it it does not take any resources whatsoever a couple of computers running and you they would they'll map out the internet like with all the uh, plugins and themes running on your wordpress site with the exact version of plugins and themes running so it's uh, they might run the scan once a once a month and then it's very easy to attack the sites that they want to attack it's not a human being going after it they're just running automated bots attacking sites uh, which they know are running wordpress so it is actually a lot lot easier to do this today and they are not targeting a specific person most of it is being done in an automated manner which is why we say that you might think you should never think that you are too insignificant on the internet that somebody will take their time to attack you then you, you are just getting attacked automatically by bots running 24 7 and possibly another computer which has been compromised is the one of the bots uh, yeah. which is attacking you yeah that's thanks for clearing that up i think there's this popular image that there's somebody wearing a ski mask behind another computer that's going after you directly but that's not really how it usually works i mean they're it's way more large scale and automated like you're talking about and i i find in my experience it's kind of hard and almost a waste of time to try and figure out why are they doing this to me like it's it's confusing and it's not worth getting into it. It's more worthy of focusing your efforts on hardening your security, having your backup system in place, and just accepting that the world is, and the internet is, you know, it's, it's just, that's just part of the internet. There's like, uh, <laughs> I mean, there, there are hackers out there and, you know, they're looking for vulnerabilities. So just focus on hardening things up um, that, and having that's backups. True. Yeah. That's true. Like, just imagine your home. You, if you did not have police and government, etc., and if you did not, uh, if you did not have a fence in place or a door, people will. There are people always looking in. Even with all of this in place, there are people always looking into your home. So there are there are passerby. They are going to call, always look into your home. If they see an opening. Uh, fortunately, you have government, etc., keeping a check, but nonetheless, they will get in. It's just the nature of uh, 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 of how if you have something valuable, and especially if you have a valuable site with a uh, with good ranking on the internet or good server resources, then you are going to be you are valuable to somebody. Yeah. And I, I also just wanted to make the point on value there that as an online course creator, entrepreneur, uh, membership site owner, um, websites are important, but if your website is the business or an important part of the business where you're actually making money with the site, it's not just a brochure website for your other business. The, your website is the business. So you need to like give it the respect it deserves and invest in the security of it and, um, you know, it's a big deal if you lose it. I mean, the, the internet and WordPress and using plugins like Lifter LMS or WooCommerce and building a, a like a real business on the internet, <clears throat> um, it's amazing what's at your fingertips, but you also need to protect that asset. It's become so easy to build websites. We forget sometimes that, you know, and it's kind of intangible. It's just behind the computer screen somewhere, but we need to protect that asset we've created, sometimes having invested many years and a lot of money into it. Absolutely, yeah, protecting the asset is, is the best way to look at it because it, a lot of sweat has gone into it and we are talking about significant amounts of money over here. And it's sometimes the value, the value of the website to you is a lot, lot higher than the value to a miscreant. Yeah, but that's, uh, yeah, that's a and, super good point. Um, can you tell us about Blog Blog Vault um, and Malcare? Like, like, how do they? What do they do to help people who want to level up their security and their backups and and just protect the asset? Okay, so 
Block Vault is a WordPress uh, backup service. Now, uh, uh, as a, any website owner, fortunately, in, in the WordPress ecosystem, we have spent a lot of uh, energies to uh, the ecosystem itself has ensured that people are aware of backups to a great extent. Uh, I, there are situations where people do take it lightly, but overall, I think the education level for backups is definitely very high. And uh, we are a word, complete WordPress backup service. So what we do is uh, we are a one-stop solution. You do not need to go to like 10 different places to ensure that you have perfect backups. Backups itself, when you talk about backups or WordPress backups, it involves doing a lot of things correctly. The simplest one, for example, is doing daily automated backups, at least for a, a course creator. This, this might not be sufficient. You might want something more regular maybe even to the extent of real-time backups, but that's a separate thing. But yeah, at least daily automated backups is one mechanism. And there are a lot of plugins which let you do that. Obviously, this is one of those. You're talking about offsite backups. You never want to store your backups on your own server. So uh, with a lot of plugins out there, you have to configure this and use additional services like Dropbox or maybe your own Amazon S3 account. And there are challenges with setting those up and running them and using them. What we do is uh, we are a single stop service. So you install our plugin and we take care of everything else automatically. We will do the best practice that you have, the best things you can do for your backup. So we'll ensure that it's encrypted. We are in, we'll ensure that it's safe. We'll ensure that it's running all the time. Also because uh, our technology lets you back up a site um, with uh, of any size. So we have backed up a site of 800 GB in size. So we can, or you must, uh, if you're running a, a site like even to, to a couple of GB in size, you'll start seeing that the backups fail. We are able to ensure that the backups are always working. And, and all of this the, comes in a single package. And for those of you listening, check this out at blogvault.net. And um, I just want to, I was just looking over your site there and I was looking at the daily automatic backups, the on-demand backups. Like if you're just getting ready to like update a bunch of stuff or, or for whatever reason you want to do a backup when you choose in addition to the on-demand, one-click auto restore, um, one-click staging setup. These are amazing for you to know that it's a complete backup package. Right. Staging is one of those things which you are very, very, proud of and uh, I think it's one of our unique selling propositions as, uh, and I think it's especially for uh, course content creators it can be quite interesting because uh, we are able to so when we do the backup we let you restore the backup onto our own test servers or on our staging servers with a click of a button so you don't have to go running around trying to figure out how to create a separate domain for staging I really recommend never putting uh, your staging server on another web, uh, on another WordPress install in your same hosting environment in the same, like if you have a shared hosting environment, putting another one, it's terrible uh, security stance. Uh, so all of this is happening in uh, with a click on our systems. We'll give you SFTP access. You can access WP admin. So you, if you want, you can update plugins and themes and test it. You can even change PHP version, for example. Yeah, or that's give it, hand cool. it over to your developer. And then with a click of a button, you can migrate it back to your life environment. Yeah, let's talk about one. You also have one click migrate. So yeah. is that, am I understanding you correctly? The backups are happening automatically or when I tell it to. And um, if I want to restore backup, I can check out the restore and staging. And then when I'm happy with it, if I'm happy with it or I do some things to it and then I'm happy with it, I can then migrate it back to my main site. That's correct. Awesome. So, and we'll actually show you the difference between your main site and your, and your staging environment. What do you mean by difference? So suppose you update a plugin. So we'll show you that this plugin was updated from this version to this version. Okay. I see. Or if you added a new file or if you'd given it to a developer, so because your, site, your other site might be moving forward. So because you are, so let's, actually this is a perfect example of uh, uh, how a 
course creator needs to think about it or an, an, if you're running an LMS system, you want to some, make some changes to your site, right? And it might, it might, if it's a five minutes work, maybe you test it on a staging environment and replicate it and do it again, but it might be something more complex. Maybe you are, are tweaking your theme in a way. Now, uh, when you are ready after a week's work, if you want to bring it back to your live environment, you might have gotten new subscribers, you might have gotten new content in there. So we will show you the difference between the live and the uh, staging environment. You will let you select the tables and the files that you want to move. So you might have updated a plugin on your live environment. So you don't want to overwrite that and we'll let you select and we'll show you the changes that have been made. I just want to emphasize how cool this is because you could use like five different plugins to achieve this, but to have a unified solution, to have your, have this staging environment happen, um, migrate only the pieces you want because while you were messing with your site or testing things or fixing something, you don't want the, the orders that came in and the new users to lose that data when you bring your staging over. So you only move over what you want, the parts that you want to move over, which makes complete sense. And as you describe how it all works, it's really amazing to me. One of my favorite terms or words is integration. So there's a lot of pieces here that I've seen other plugins do individually or hosting companies and stuff, but you've actually integrated the full picture of what that person who's doing uh, who wants to have a backup system and staging and be able to like migrate and restore and all this, you've rolled that into one solution. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And this is integration is actually one of the things which is uh, very important, especially in when we are offering a service like us, because there's so much complexity you are dealing with. And, yeah. And uh, I just, I just want to add a note there too. A lot of people using like Lift Your LMS, for example, they may not be highly technical users. So we're, they're counting on the tools to kind of handle that. So keep going. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Yeah. And uh, that, that's our goal. It's again, always everything is a work in progress. And basically we are doing so a lot of what we are building is what our customers are asking us for. So yeah. I mean, uh, you're, you're in good company in terms of having customers involved in the conversation of what they need and like completing the loop of the solution that they're looking for, the problem that they're dealing with. Um, let's talk about security a little bit. I mean, that's, that's an, I thank you for painting the picture on what's possible with blog vault. And again, that's at blogvault.net. Um, but what is, what is, tell us more about what you offer in terms of security. What's Malcare? All right. All so, uh, Malcare is, uh, Malcare is uh, a complete uh, WordPress security solution. Uh, what it lets you do is, uh, I think the most important piece of Malcare is it's able to identify malware, which no one else can. So we are able to uh, scan your site every day automatically uh, with very, very complex algorithms and we have data from over 250,000 sites. So we have learnings from over 250,000 sites that we have backed up. And we use that learning to tell you whether your site is hacked or not. I just want and, to say how beautiful that is because it, like in my story I told earlier, I was probably hacked for months before I realized I had a problem. I didn't even believe my customers when they first told me about it. I thought they were on the wrong website or something, but um, to have it running in the background and have that kind of machine learning or having that, having it get smarter as time goes on is so cool. Right. And so the, we, uh, I think, again, we are very uniquely positioned to solve some problems like this uh, because of the amount of data we see normally, and we can use the learnings from all sites that we have to improve security stance. And all of this is happening on our servers. So without putting any load on your on your server. So everything happens, all the scanning, all these algorithms are run on our servers to figure out hacks, well, to, to figure out if your site is hacked. Uh, if your site is hacked, we'll inform you with 
very at least what we believe is very high accuracy and for us one of the challenge biggest challenges was uh, false positives which we have fought a lot so uh, having false positives is one of the biggest problems when it comes to security because we can go tone deaf very very soon so you'll cry, cry wolf once you'll cry wolf second time and the third time you'll be like okay this guy is just uh, bothering me for no reason so we've spent can you a describe, lot can you describe a false positive in more detail all right so so one of the things and again i don't want to shit on uh, other plugins out there i think that some of them are great but a lot of them tend to create this noise saying that something is wrong with your site something is going on some file has been modified and if you are a content creator if you are a store uh, if you are a store owner you would, first time you would be like okay something is really going on you'll contact your developer to figure out what the hell happened and then your developer will be like no nothing really happened it's a normal plugin update or someone like i said there are people always looking into your site trying to attack it right uh, they or they will they're always peeking in so getting alarmed for minor issues is i think you should your security solution should just take care of it the other part is about false positives is because of the technology of the ways uh, the ways many of these plugins work they create a false alarm they are unable to identify when a site is really hacked and when it is not so they look for certain keywords if that keyword is present they set you an alarm but those keywords threads are present in very many normal cases the other way also works uh the malware is so complex that they just don't are not able to find that kind of malware because hackers are trying to keep one step ahead of and when you have your code out in the open the hackers know exactly how you how you work right so they will know how a popular security plugin works and they can very easily circumvent uh that system so uh a com- combination of these things lead to false positives which basically uh, you'll pay attention it to once to it once you pay attention it to it twice but the third time you are just going to ignore it and yeah the crying wolf story really holds true in this case we have seen this enough number of times so we have paid an ex- extreme attention to making sure that we only alarm you when we are very certain that there is malware on your site uh beyond that so suppose we find malware on your site that's part only part of the job we you can clean it with a click of a button so we have built an auto cleaner which you click on a button and your site gets cleaned automatically so you do not have to wait for hours to get it cleaned or figure out how the hell to get it cleaned share credentials and going back and forth none of that you need to do so everything happens automatically you know what i love about entrepreneurs is i have uh done or experimented with a lot of backups and malware and firewall security stuff and you're talking directly to pain points that i've experienced when i have used tools before in terms of false positives or i have to do a bunch of work before i get before i can get the malware cleaned up um do you're just talking to like or like notifications that like aren't helpful or there's so something's happening but nothing's really actually wrong like it's uh i love how you have kept your ear to the ground and paid attention to what the customers need and and are just evolving i mean tools get better over time and like you said your um pulling data from all these different sites and it's just getting smarter and you know evolving with the attackers <laughs> so the i mean it's not something you can ever rest you have to like it's a mission that you have to like stay on forever and you're inspiring a lot of confidence there so thank you for your leadership no thank you and frankly like like you said it's just about paying attention to what your customers are saying so even today a lot of my time goes into customer support in fact i find it very difficult to understand like if you think about it like if anyone if a seasoned entrepreneur were to talk to me they would like okay stop doing customer support so much but that's the only way we are able to understand exactly what is going on so i'm i'm quite conflicted about because you want to grow your business and 
spending so much time doing customer support is not productive but at the same time that's the only way you we are really understanding what's going on and what the customers need i heard i uh 100% relate to you and have felt the same way and get comments sometimes about how much time i spend in support or in or taking pre-sales calls and things but uh i think it's actually one of my biggest strengths because i i have my finger on the pulse and uh, some people call that like a frontline obsession. I'm obsessed with our customers. I, or I'm just obsessed with being in touch with what they need and what they're looking for and what their problems are. And that's how we innovate. It's actually really simple. Yeah, you, yeah I can totally relate to what you're saying there. Like that's, uh, but there's no, it's not, there's no right answer. You always feel guilty about it at the end of it, if you ask me. Like, yeah. and I can totally imagine a course creator also, like how much time do you spend marketing the course or is creating it to listening to your hanging out in your forums? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, good course creators and membership site people, they engage with their students. If you just automate everything and delegate every walk away, that's not the best strategy for continuous improvement. Um, so, well, Akshat, I want to thank you very much for coming on the show. For those of you who are interested in Malcare, that's at malcare.com. And then um, where else can people find out about you? Uh, I am on Twitter, though I don't really, I'm too, too much of a developer to, to be on Twitter. Or I don't know. I don't think that's, that's fair because a lot of good developers are there. On Twitter. I'm, too, <laughs> I'm too antisocial to be on Twitter, I would say. Let's put it that way. And uh, you're, too, you're too busy helping your customers at Blog Vault and Malcare and your team, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm not, not, not the most social, but I do attend a few WordCamps. So uh, I think WordCamp US and WordCamp Europe, those are the two big WordCamps I definitely try and attend. That's awesome. Well, thank and, you so much for coming on the show. And I just want to, um, and really thank you for sharing so much insight into the situation with backup, security, what hacking really is, what malware is, and your mission to protect against those things with your, with your products, Blog Vault and Malcare. Um, thank you so much, we really appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Thank you again for having me and thank you everyone for, for your time.